All right, folks, God bless you guys, and welcome to This Is It, 4, 3, 2, 1. Can you feel it, guys? 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go before the fire. Guys, I almost find it impossible to believe that in 2002, when I got saved, the moment I got saved, I knew there was a fire coming to destroy everything. It was instilled in me as soon as I was anointed with the Holy Spirit, I knew there was a fire coming to destroy everything. Subsequently, the Lord trained me up in the Bible for several years until 2007 when the Lord sent me out into the general public and said, now you will answer the watchman's call in Ezekiel. I didn't want to do it. I'm just being honest. I was in court fighting for custody of my children. I said, if I go do this, it's going to be horrible in court. And the Lord showed me, open the Bible. I opened up to Ezekiel, uh, a watchman's call. If the watchman seeth the sword coming in, he warneth not the people. And the people die in their sins. I will hold the watchman personally responsible. His blood for theirs. He got my attention very quickly. And I said, you know what? I'd rather worry about what the world's going to do to me than what the Lord God's going to do to me. So I answered the call. That's when I did the Just a Messenger series. It's on a channel called Secret Mystery Busted. So here we are. 2023, we're at the door of a nuclear war where a thermonuclear war is on the table. It's You know it's going to happen. It's printed as images on the U.S. currency notes. The $10 bill shows a tidal wave covering a seven-story building. That's a prophetic utterance the Lord gave me in 2007. The $100 bill has a nuke destroying buildings, three layers of ink. It's part of the prophetic utterance the Lord gave me in 2007. Out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. That's a nuke. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem will cover the city by the sea. That's a tidal wave. <clears throat> we're, at the, we're at the moment of that happening. Back in 2002, can you imagine any of this being on your table right now? I mean, can you even imagine it? But now... It seems like the obvious progression of what's going to happen. You know there's nukes coming. Everybody knows it. it. Just hasn't happened yet, but it's on the way. It's also printed as images on U.S. currency notes. Go to the Jonathan Kleck channel and hit the playlist. The number one short video that plays shows you exactly the images that are printed on the U.S. currency that show New York being destroyed by nukes. Shows a tidal wave coming over a seven-story building produced by the nuclear explosion. So it's a foregone conclusion. It's going to happen. It's printed on the money. The Twin Towers were printed on your money. The Pentagon was printed on your money, on your $20 bill. The Federal Building bombing was printed on your, on your $20 bill. Do you know how stupid all this is now? Do you know how, like, obvious stupid it is? It's stupid obvious. <clears throat> leaving $87 billion in arms over in the Middle East. Oh, we got to get out of Afghanistan so fast, we got to leave $87 billion over there in arms. Y'all know who Tom Cotton is? Y'all know who Mark Levine is? <clears throat> I'm going to leave two links. Y'all need to watch these links. You need to watch the entire segment. It's only like one of them. Let me show you. One of them is on Megyn Kelly. It's a, it's a 10 minute segment right here with this author, how one author figured out that former president Barack Obama's book was fiction. He also did a, a segment with Megyn Kelly, how Obama's writings fantasized about gay sex was suppressed for years. Okay. So this same guy right here in this interview with Megyn Kelly says that the girl that Obama lived with, how she said the real reason they broke up was because he would not denounce that one of the Nazis' crimes against the Jews was a horrific, horrible, evil thing to do. And his girlfriend, her grandparents actually helped the Jews during World War II. And so she said that's the reason they broke up, because he was very anti-Semitic. 
and so is David Jeremiah Wright, the, you know, the, the pastor, the alleged Christian pastor. Uh, anyway, so now if you'll just go watch these videos right here, I'll put it in the link. Now, a lot of people go, hey, Jonathan, uh, where are the show notes? <clears throat> like you, you said you would do it, put them in the link. Let me show you guys. Maybe y'all don't know how to navigate. Let me just show you very quickly. So if this is if this is one of my videos, watch this. Let me go back to this one right here. Right here, you see these blue links right here on this uh, the Eternal Abyss Rising video right here, Madonna and Quavo, Destruction of America, Israel, and Palestine. In this video right here, I told you guys that Madonna already showed the plans for the entire thing back in 2019. She showed the destruction of America, the pit rising, the bottomless pit rising, the energy from the pit rising, taking over humanity. She showed it. She showed nuclear devastation. She showed the arm fall off the Statue of Liberty, nuking the whole place. It was a nuclear wasteland. Then she showed people walking up the stage between the two pillars that were both serpent beings, serpent race. And everybody walks up and then falls off the top of the stairs. And that's the end of Madonna's video. I broke it down. Mine was blocked worldwide when I did it. Why? Other people were using the same footage because they didn't know what it was really about. It's about a serpent race taking over. Now watch this. Here is where you can get the segment right here. Now watch this. I'm going to click on this. Madonna publicizes not everyone is coming to the future. Not everyone that's here is going to last. And she did her whole thing. There, there's a write-up on it. Here is the video that was banned. Uh, this is a, a secondary video banned worldwide. So I, 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 I did a video saying, why did they ban mine worldwide? Here's Madonna's actual video right here. Play this entire video, please. If you want to know what's going on, you want to have a clear vision of what's happening in the world. Look past the veil. Look past the news pundits. Look past the illusion. Look to see what's really going on. This is about a serpent race taking over and killing all the sheep. That's why I wear 350. This is the only battle there really is, 350. 350 in the Bible is this, Anna Crino, to vigorously judge from down to up. That's the way you get your vision back and you're able to see. Jesus said his ministry was to restore the sight to the blind. Not just people that are blind, but the spiritually blind, which is everybody. In order to get your vision restored, your eye has to become single. You have to be single. You have one up, one down. I'm going to play you a very short video that Zach did last night for you guys. I did the audio for him, and Zach did a slam dunk. Short little video to show you that the Bible tells you you're in here because you're here in your flesh because you're in trouble. It's not, oh, yay, I'm alive and I have a host body. You know, when somebody's like, click, the Bible doesn't mention the host body. It's called the flesh. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, yeah. It's mentioned in Genesis 1. It's mentioned all through Romans 8. The flesh is in opposition. You know what the word opposition means? Opposite position to the spirit. Spirit, flesh. Flesh is attached to the pit, spirit's attached to the Lord. So you have one eye that goes to the pit, to your own personal worm that's feeding off you. One eye that goes to heaven, to a star. And that is the energy that's within your host body at war. An angel and a demon. This is factual. That's what the Lord let me prove. 350, right there, 1 Corinthians 2. I've done it over and over again. Anna Crino. Okay, I'm going to play this short little video by Zach. It's only two minutes. I want you to watch it. And then I'm going to go into all this crazy stuff. We're at the door. Then I'm going to show you the supernatural thing that happened to me. This morning at 3 a.m., I was awakened by the Lord. It was a crazy fulfillment of the prophetic utterance that the Lord gave me. In a dream, I woke up going like, whoa. And then the I marched into my one of my computer stations and I sat down and the miracles just started popping off. And the Lord said, document it, document it, document it, 
document it. And I documented it all. I'm going to share it with you. You decide for yourself. I already know I'm a harbinger. The end of the world is here. So if you haven't settled that account, when it all goes down, well, then you'll have to either settle it before you die or you'll have to die with it unsettled and go to the pit. Those are the options. So the way to settle it is with Christ, his crucifixion on the, on the cross. Do you know a lot of people say, Clegg, you never talk about the gospel. Ready? That is the gospel. A lot of people, no, it's not. You want to bet? Do you know what the word gospel is? Euangelizo. Like, you know, evangelize. Euangelizo. That's the word for gospel. Do you know what euangelizo means? Good angel. Preach the good angel. <laughs> That's what the word gospel means. Uh huh. Look like you don't preach the gospel. That's all I preach is the truth. <laughs> okay, now. Okay, now, but the serpent race hates it. They're willing to go to a lot of extremes to try and make sure y'all don't get what I've got, which is freedom. Freedom in Christ. Freedom from fear of what's coming. The end of the world to me is like, yes, finally, thank God it's here. Most people are like, oh, no, I don't want to, no, no. Well, if you're freaked out because the end of the world's here, that means you're not ready. If you're like, thank God it's finally here, that means you're converted and you're ready. I mean, it's just that simple. If you've been converted, you want to leave this place. You know that your body is a prison. That's why it says in Isaiah 61, the opening of dungeons to them that are bound. You know what the dungeon is? The redoubling of your eyes because you're, you're tied up. Your, your, your body is your dungeon. <laughs> yeah, Luke 4. Isaiah 61, I've been over it so many times. Okay, so here we go. Cleckfiles.com. If you don't know anything I'm talking about, just go devour Cleckfiles.com. Okay, here we go. Let me show you. Let me show you the little shorty Zach made for y'all last night. This is, I gave him an audio for this. He hit a home run. I want you to watch it. By the way, uh, before I go any further, I, I want to give credit where credit's due. Zach is the one that does these short videos. It's his little niche. Um, I do the audio and I just give it to him. I say, do whatever you want because I know Zach knows the system. He understands it. He understands the gospel. I said, here is the audio, Zach. Do what you want. And Zach goes and does these shorties for you. He stays up late doing them. But here is under three minutes of a knockout punch to Satan's kingdom. You want to understand how simple it really all is? Watch this little video. All right, here we go. Ready? Something huge is about to happen. Here we go. Which is down. I suggest you watch it two or three times. I think one of the most important things to understand about being in the host body that you're in is I'm, understanding who I'm going to I'm going to pause that. I want to make sure cuz I saw somebody that thinks they're a Christian saying, "Oh, you're perverting the scriptures, Cleck. There's no host body's not mentioned in it." <laughs> who will save this from our vile body? <laughs> Someone that says something like that, I'm like, "You're obviously not converted because you couldn't even make a comment like that if you were converted. There's no way." The flesh is the host body. The, the Bible says the flesh is in opposition to the Spirit of God. Opposite position. Opposition to the Spirit of God. Who will save this me from this body of death? Okay, so the flesh is the host body. Just for clarification for those people that think they know the gospel. Okay, I'm sorry, but... I've got, I've got people that I cannot let be led astray by people that make comments that are uneducated and unspiritual. So I will put you in your place. I think one of the most important things to understand about being in the host body that you're in is understanding who you are and why you're here. If you don't understand that you're here as punishment, you will never understand the meaning of life, you'll never be able to get it. 
because people say, why is there evil in the world? And that's why they can't reconcile life with a loving God. Well, if you chose to take on a host body, which you did, then you chose to be part of the tree of the knowledge of good, which is up and evil, which is down. The God of heaven is El, the almighty God from heaven. And the God from the pit is Satan. And in this world, just as Satan said to Jesus, if you will bow down and worship me, all these kingdoms are mine. I'll give them to you. All authority has been given to me. Because in the system that is the earth, Satan is the one that owns the flesh. So if you come into the flesh, you are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the only way to get out of it is to get converted, which literally means inverted, turned back the other way. So it says in Acts 17.6, these that have turned the world upside down have come hither also because Christians turn the world upside down to show you the truth. Isaiah 29, 15 and 16, woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord. Their works are in the darkness. Don't forget, darkness is down. Their works are in the darkness. And they say, who seeth us, who knoweth us? Surely your th turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Esteemed as the potter's clay means regarded as that which the Lord God has made. Because when you came into the system, you got inverted. And because of that, you are part of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Isaiah 42, 24, who turned Israel over to the robbers or Jacob to the rob robbers and Israel to the spoiler? Was it not the Lord against whom we have sinned? I'm going to pause that because a lot of times I read scriptures right out of my head. I want to make sure I read it correctly for you. Watch. Isaiah 42, 24, who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Now listen. So I'm going to show you right after this short little video segment, before I go into the political stuff that shows we're at the end of the world, I'm going to go into a couple of scriptures, Genesis 1, Genesis 2, and 1 Corinthians 15, to show you the perfection of the scriptures that were showing you what was going on from the beginning. Now, don't forget, Genesis was written by whom? Moses. Wasn't Moses trained in all the ways of the Egyptians? So Moses was a prince of Egypt. He knew all their religious stuff. He knew all their secret stuff. Moses was like a, you know, a guy like planted like a rat at, at the Illuminati Mason meetings. <laughs> and then he came out and ratted them all out. Think about it. He was a prince of Egypt. He knew all their stuff. And so then he gets called out of it. And then he turns out to be the one that writes those books. It's a no brainer. How do you think he knew it all? Of course. All right. Now, I just wanted to read that again. So now let me go back. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Who are the robbers? You know, like the clothing lines hunted for dinner, <laughs> you know, like broken promises, all the clothing lines I've shown you guys. I mean, they put it in everything. It manifests everywhere all the time. The robbers are the ones that started the host body system that trapped the angels in it because they want your soul. What are they robbing? Your soul. What are they hunting? Your soul. I mean, it's the most obvious thing in the world now that the work's been done. And the folders that I've given you guys are more valuable than all the money in the world. If you guys haven't taken hold of the folders that the Lord let me do for you, and you haven't gone through every single folder and just looked at every picture, uh, you've missed out on absolute platinum treasure gold that was dug up and just put on pages for you. It's, it's what I gave my life for, was y'all's well-being and to serve the Lord and to make sure what the Lord gave me, I gave to you. That's why Jonathan means Yahweh has given. As a matter of fact, I have to show you guys. I got a hold of the book. I got. A, I, I found one of the books, uh, one of the same exact book that the Lord used to show me 
who I was when I had a meltdown after I'd gotten saved. And I was so freaked out by my supernatural ability as I was drawing in images of the Virgin. There's like kids being molested by Catholic priests. There's dead sheep. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I started yelling at the, I mean, I was like, why did you show me this shit? And I was yelling at the ceiling going, why would you show me this? You know, essays. I was like, what is going on? Who am I to you that you would show me this? And the Lord told me, go open that book on your coffee table. I had randomly bought some book at a place called the Half Price Bookstore. I don't go to, I don't go to bookstores. I went to A&M for engineering. I got sick of books. I don't like books. So for me to go to a half price bookstore is like insane. I'd gone in a half price bookstore. I'm like, what am I doing in here? And the Lord led me over to this one book called the ABCs of the Bible. Told me to get it. I bought it. I didn't really even look at it. I took it home. I mean, I popped it open. I saw it had artwork in it and stuff. I'm like, okay, whatever. I took it home, put it on my coffee table. And then at a future date, not too far from when I bought it, when I was drawing in and exercising my supernatural gift, like drawing in all this stuff, like the hieroglyph and that kind of stuff, I had just drawn in an image of the Virgin and it showed a Catholic priest molesting a little boy. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, and I freaked out. I had a meltdown. I'm like, what is going on? How come I can see this stuff? Who am I to you that you, God, would show me all this sick, twisted, yeah. And the Lord told me, go open that book on your dresser. I mean, on your coffee table. And I went and opened it up. And it. I'm going to show you the page I opened up to. I got a hold of one of the books. I went online because I was praying about it one day. I was like, I can't find a copy of that page. It's in one of the folders. But it's 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 not a clean copy. You can read it. But it's. I just wanted you know, a really nice one. And I heard the Lord tell me, go online and find it. I went online and I found one on Amazon. I found one on eBay and I bought them both. I'm going to show them to you. That's when the Lord revealed to me the meaning of my name. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Jonathan means Yahweh has given. Collect means a messenger that rings the bell and gathers the church. Okay, now let me get back to what we're doing. Back to the shorty. Here we go. If you don't mind... We're uh, two minutes and 16 seconds into it. I'm going to play it from the beginning one more time. If you don't want to watch it, just fast forward. Here we go. I think one of the most important things to understand about being in the host body that you're in Flesh. is understanding who you are and why you're here. If you don't understand that you're here as punishment, you will never understand the meaning of life. You'll never be able to get it because... People say, why is there evil in the world? And that's why they can't reconcile life with a loving God. Well, if you chose to take on a host body, which you did, then you chose to be part of the tree of the knowledge of good, which is up and evil, which is down. The God of heaven is El, the almighty God from heaven. And the God from the pit is Satan. And in this world, just as Satan said to Jesus, if you will bow down and worship me, all these kingdoms are mine. I'll give them to you. All authority has been given to me. Because in the system that is the earth, Satan is the one that owns the flesh. So if you come into the flesh, you are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the only way to get out of it is to get converted, which literally means inverted, turned back the other way. So it says in Acts 17.6, these that have turned the world upside down have come hither also because Christians turn the world upside down to show you the truth. Isaiah 29, 15 and 16, woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord. Their works are in the darkness. Don't forget, darkness is down. Their works are in the darkness. And they say, who seeth us, who knoweth us? Surely your th turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Esteemed as the potter's clay means regarded as that which the Lord God has made. Because when you came into the system, you got inverted. And because of that, you are part of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Isaiah 42, 24, who turned Israel over to the robbers or Jacob to the rob robbers and Israel to the spoiler? 
Was it not the Lord against whom we have sinned? So we got turned over to the spoiler, to the robbers. And the way we got turned over is in our host bodies and we were inverted. Well, when you turn everything the opposite direction, then you see the truth. Well, if the system is a lie, well, when you invert the whole world, then you see the truth. Who's the truth? Jesus. Jesus is the truth. Then you're able to see, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? This whole place is upside down. Oh, there you go. It's Satan's hidden kingdom, the prince of darkness upside down. Now just look and see with your own eyes. Okay, so now if you'll pay attention while you watch this thing and you just kind of pay attention and you go to these little spots where you see something turn upside down. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to kind of fast forward through here. Watch this. Okay, what do you see right there? What is it you're looking at? You're looking at a tattoo. A tattoo of a girl with fangs and she's got a tongue coming out like a snake, like a serpent. A female with two down triangles on her face. One right there, one right there. Now watch. Turn the world upside down to show you. Why is it the devil when you turn it the other way? I mean, you know, so you can make some argument. Oh, someone just wanted to do the devil. No, this is consistent in mainstream clothing. I can show this to you ad infinitum. All day long, everywhere, all the time. It's everywhere. It's on. I can go to the grocery store and pick a card off the shelf. I can pick up a box of Frosted Flakes and show it to you. It's everywhere. What you're looking at right there is everywhere. You just didn't know it. Who goes to the grocery store and starts turning everything upside down and looking at it? I do. Well, I don't stand in the grocery store anymore. But the Lord, when he taught me to see their world, I, I saw right through it. And in the end, everything secret will be made public. It's secret because it's hidden in the down position, just like that image I just showed you. It looks like a girl, but it's not a girl. It's, it's more than, it's two things. It's a girl, and she's supposed to be wearing some silly headdress thing, but it's just simply the devil upside down. Hold upside down to show you. There it is. I mean, it's the most simple thing in the world, and that's on a crino right there on my hat. Those of us that are... Born again, spiritual, we discern on a crino all things, but we ourselves are judged on a crino of no man. So now let me show you that in the Bible. Okay, let me show you. Y'all remember the Adidas original commercials where they just go type in and go to YouTube, type in Adidas original. Original is never finished. Just go watch them all yourself. It's always the serpent race. They start out upside down. But let me show you Genesis 1. Genesis 2 and 1 Corinthians 2. Then I'm going to show you political stuff that shows you you're at the end of the world. And you're going to see people that are aligned with what's going on and how if you just simply connect these dots, everything will make total sense and you'll go, it's a no-brainer. And then you'll know that the eventuality of what's coming has to come. You'll know it. Once, you, once I just put these very simple facts in front of you, facts are stubborn things. You know, people lie a lot, but when you have facts where the, it's actual reality, they're stubborn things. They just won't go away. Just like this picture I'm showing you. Is that an image of the devil? It's a yes or no. Uh, you know, somebody who's uh, not converted or somebody that wants to argue will say, oh, that's something else. That's not the devil. That's a guy with teeth. It's like, okay, all right. But that just shows they're delusional. So here we go. Let's go to the Bible. You ready? Okay, so y'all know that Jesus is our peace, right? And he's our peace, for he is our peace. It's interesting because the word peace is made from 1515. It means to join. See what it says? The word peace means to join. One, peace, quietness, at rest, at one again. See, look. Set at one again. Well, that means you had to be two or more. So if Jesus is your peace, if there is a right side up you, an angel, and then an upside down you, demon, 
two different sources of energy, one from the pit, the demonic, the demonic connection, then the angelic connection, you're not at peace. Well, if you if you get rid of the demonic one by confessing your sins to Christ and being willing to say, Jesus, take over this host body, then you become one. Your eyes become single and the two come together. I've shown you the magnet thing. It's the most obvious thing in the world. So he is our peace. It means to join. Join what? The two different energies that were in you to join them together, reconciling both to God through the cross. Ready? Boom. To equalize that which Elohim has turned upside down. Now watch. I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes 7 right now. Because see, Jesus, who is Emmanuel, with us is El, the Almighty God. Emmanuel means with us is. And then El, the Almighty God. By the way, if you would learn your vocabulary in the Bible of these names of God, no one could pull this stuff over on you anymore. Do you know how important definitions are in vocabulary? I mean, if you don't know the definition and you're using a word, you don't even know what you're saying. I see people that talk about, you know, they think they know the name of God and they know nothing. It's like, wait a minute. It's very simple. El, the Almighty God from heaven. He comes into the system. What did it say in Isaiah? What will you call El that comes in to save his people? Remember, he came to save his people. He didn't come to save their people. He came to save his people that got caught in the system. A lot of people never even think about that. His name is Emmanuel, Isaiah 7. And the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, bring forth a son. You shall call his name with us is El, the Almighty God. Imanu with us is El, the Almighty God. So who's the Almighty God, no matter what? El, because he's the one that comes into the system from heaven to save you from going to hell. You're in the intermediate spot. You're like in between heaven and hell. And until that's judicially decided, when your body dies, if you are one up, one down, then you go to the pit the moment you die. If you are converted, absent from the body, present with Christ. Okay, now, let me show you the word of God that's not arguable. Okay, by the way, I just guys, I am so fired up. By the way, let me just slow down. <laughs> I deal with a lot of haters. So sometimes when I deliver my videos, I'm like, I'm going to be very blunt. I'm going to say, this is the way it is. And to the people that don't like it, they get their feathers all ruffled, and that's just too bad. Don't care. But for the people that I'm ministering to, do, to I know you guys are like, yes! Because the truth, when the truth lives in you, when truth is delivered, it's like, yes! But the ones that hate the truth, boy, they get, they get so flustered. They get so ruffled. Okay, now, let me deliver the truth of the Word of God. You ready? So... He is our peace. What does it say? Does it say to join, yes or no? Does it say to set at rest at one again, yes or no? Rest, set at one again. That's exactly what it says. He is our peace that sets you at one again by joining you. And he had broken down the middle wall of partition, having abolished. Ab abolish, to render entirely useless, to no effect, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the hostility, opposition, and hatred within you. So you have hatred in you. Where does it come from? The pit, through a demon that's attached to you your whole life. So he's willing to abolish it in his flesh by dying on the cross between two different guys, representing the good you and the bad you, the angelic you and the demonic you. Well, who turned you upside down? How'd you get turned upside down? Well, you're an angel. And when you got duped into taking on a host body, which is the forbidden fruit, when you come in and you get your host body, you're inverted. And well, who inverted you? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's go see. Let me show you what... Uh, friend of mine that is very scripturally uh, profound dug this one up, and this one's a slam dunk. Ecclesiastes 7. Consider the work. I'm going to show you the word work. 
generally a transaction. You see that? A transaction. Wow. So you get something for something else. Look at what it says. The root of the word is to do or to make. Say this out loud. Ah, saw. To do or to make, to accomplish. Okay, consider the work of God. I want everyone to say this word. See the word God? This is Ecclesiastes 7.13. Consider the work of God. I'm going to click on God. See that? The word, I'm going to make it pink because it's a fitting color for it. What does that say right there in pink? Does that say God's? What is this? Say this word out loud. Elohim. Say it. Say it at least three times. Elohim. Hebrew word 430 is Elohim. Hebrew word 430 is Elohim. Elohim means God's. Now, if you've studied Hebrew at all, you should know that the plural form of a word, they'll add im, I am. Uh, if you speak Spanish, you can say uh, like ellos, uh, they. Uh, if you want to make something plural, uh, like the word muchacho, like boy, muchachos. Girls, instead of girl is muchacha, but girls, plural is muchachas. In Hebrew, you add im. I am. Do you want to make it plural? So the word for instead of Elohim in its singular form is Eloah. Eloah. But if you want to make Eloah plural, it's Elohim. Im is the plural form. Okay. Having linguistic skills is something the Lord blessed me with from living in different countries. And he made, he made sure I was made exactly like he wanted me for what I do for you now. Watch. Elohim, please say it out loud. See, it's a plural look. It tells you right here. It's the plural form look. Plural form of Eloah. See it? Look. Eloah. See it? Plural form of Eloah. So it's God's in the ordinary sense, but specifically used in the plural thus, especially with the article, say that word right there, of the supreme God. And that means plural you're of the supreme god so you're god's little god magistrates judges and angels and i'm going to change angels to a different color we'll make them rust colored see it angels so gods are the same as magistrates magistrates and angels are the same judges and angels magistrates and angels gods and angels they're all the same as used in the context of Elohim. So what is Elohim? It's a cumulative force of many in one. Elohim, plural, but also in a singular form. Many in one. Guess what? You know where you see that? On your dollar bill. No way, yeah. Where it says, you know, e pluribus unum. Many out of one. Yeah, e pluribus unum. Out of many, one. Gods of the Supreme God. Magistrates, angels. So Elohim are a bunch of angels. Gods, magistrates. Consider the work of Elohim, but it's a cumulative force of one, many, and one. So consider the work of Elohim. For who can make that straight, which Elohim has made crooked? So let's look at the word straight. See the word straight right there? Say that, to equalize, to make straight. Okay, so if I have one up and one down, one eye that goes up and one eye that's in opposition that goes down. So how do I equalize these eyes? Well, I can either turn them both down, but that's the God of the pit. So if I turn them both up, then they're equalized. They're not equalized like this. They are in opposition to each other. So who can equalize, make straight, that which Elohim has made crooked? Look at the word crooked. Please just say this out loud. Turn upside down. So let's look at the other thing. To bow self. Wow, to bow self. So you got inverted. To make crooked. Wow, to make crooked. 
falsifying oh so now you got something that's a sham a lie to overthrow deal perversely pervert it reminds me of the song by the beatles while my guitar gently weeps you were you were perverted you were inverted you were perverted too subvert turn upside down so no matter what anybody says in the word of god in ecclesiastes 7 it says who can equalize that which Elohim, the cumulative force of Elohim, many in one, angels, a whole bunch of angels, magistrates, and judges, who can equalize that which they have turned upside down? Elohim. It says it right there. So once you understand this, no one will be able to dupe you, give you any false doctrine anymore. This is where the rubber meets the road. Now, do you all see this? Now let's go to Genesis, the formation of the first man. Okay, in the beginning, Elohim created Elohim, gods of the supreme God. Because the Bible says, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Oh, well, then it would make sense that if Jesus's kingdom is not of the world, then the world has a different kingdom. Someone else, that's someone else's kingdom. Well, of course it does. It's Satan's because Satan said, Jesus, if you'll simply bow down and worship me, all this is mine. I can give it to you. You see how simple this really is? Uh, but don't forget, the Lord God, the Lord God created Elohim. So if Elohim's going to create a system in order to trap angels, well, the Lord God allowed it because he said, I create the darkness and I form the light. Who created Elohim? The Lord God. In order for anything to exist, it had to be separated into two different things. Or you wouldn't even know it existed. Now watch. Ready? So Elohim, now let's get down to the crux of the matter. And Elohim said, Elo, see the word right there? What's the word for God? Let's, let, you know what, let's do it in pink. There it is. And Elohim said, let us make, remember that word asa I showed you? Asa. Uh-huh. Let us asa make man in our image. Look at the word image. Just please read this out loud with your own lips. To shade. When you say when you shade something, don't you make it darker? So to shade. A phantom that is figuratively an illusion, a resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. Do you think the Lord God makes idols? No, but he allows free will. So see, the Lord God allows free will for everything to exist. That's why there's a band, band called Jane's Addiction with twin females burning. Jane is God is gracious. God is gracious addiction because that source will go and start another one after this. Ready? To shade a phantom that is figuratively an illusion. Hence a representative figure, especially an idol. So Elohim said, let us make man in our image an illusion. Says it right there. So what's Elohim doing right now? They're making a trap to invert angels. Doesn't it say in Ecclesiastes 7, who can make equal that which Elohim has turned upside down? Well, here is the formation of a man. Says it right there. Let us make man in our image. But see, the hard part to figure out with all this was parthenogenesis, that that first humanoid that is a reptilian form of human that Elohim created through parthenogenesis. That's what the Lord let me prove using the Vatican is a snake an audience hall is a snake. And it's a reptilian form of, of production and a, uh, um, uh, asexual production in which they create a host body system, the flesh. They create the flesh through a female system that's why the vatican worships the virgin because they worship female energy from the pit because the female energy from the pit is what sets the trap 
those bites, just like an angler fish. And I've shown you a video called the Deceit of Women Diorama. And if you go watch that in Collect Files, Deceit of Women Diorama, it'll blow your mind. It shows a monster using a host, uh, a female, like just like an angler fish. And guys are walking up to her like, hey, how's it going? Go look at Hero Wars. It's, you know, a game on they have on YouTube now. Same thing. Here we go. Elohim said, let us make man in our image. It's an illusion. Let's go to Genesis 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all the hosts. So please say this word out loud. Seba, a mass of persons or figuratively, figurative things, especially regularly organized for war and army. What was made in Genesis 1? A group organized for war. Do you think that's the Lord God organizing that for war? Or do you think that's Satan saying, I will arise above the stars of the Most High. I will be like the Most High. I will rise above the stars. You know who the stars are? The princes of El. That's where our other eye goes. So the princes of El, the Almighty God, the lights in the sky, your essence is a light. So right here in Genesis 2, the host was finished. Genesis 1 was the creating of the host. Why do you think it's called the host body? And then our God is the Lord of hosts. Now watch. Watch how simple. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and the host, the group organized for war, a military campaign, a battle, a company host service for war, and on the seventh day, God, is that El, the Almighty God? It's a yes or no. It's Elohim. Ended his work. Please say that word out loud. Deputyship. That is ministry. Generally employment. Never serve all. So that means you're not serving. You're in opposition to the Lord God. So the deputy, who's the deputy? Well, it's not the Lord God, is it? It's obviously Elohim. What was Elohim doing? Creating a group for war. That's what they were doing in Genesis 1. It says it right there. Okay, now, you ready? Now watch what happens. Now remember, two sides of one equation there's two sides of an equation. There's the upside, there's the downside. Genesis 1 was the side that's attached to the pit, the downside side, Adidas original. That's why they're always hanging upside down. Adidas, all day I dream about sex, right? That's what people say it's an acronym for. On the seventh day, Elohim rested from his deputyship, his ministry, generally employment, never serve all. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And everybody say that word, the Lord God, the Lord, 3068, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. Now, let me ask you a question. If you're the self-existent, eternal Jehovah. If you created Elohim as one part of the equation and they they have free will and they want to start a system that's got a host body and then the angels that want to come into the system they're like I want to go in I want to go in but it's even it's a trap but Lucifer said we won't die well he lied to you cuz Lucifer's capable of lying but the Lord God our God's not capable of lying but you quit trusting and believing him and you believe Lucifer and you're like I'm going to take on a host body so then the Lord God's all right everyone that wants to go in gets to go in that's part of what this is all about free will raise your hand so then the lord god the self-existent and the reason he's self-existent is because he buys it back on a cross he buys back both sides of the equation on a cross in the flesh because he's el the almighty god from heaven so he can come into the system as a spiritual being in the host body the flesh which was created in genesis 1 he can buy back anything in the flesh because he comes in to pay for it this is perfection do you understand who he is now so 
Jesus is a self-existing eternal Jehovah. And I can prove that using exactly the vocabulary in the word of God. Jesus is the self-existing eternal Jehovah. So here's Jesus in Genesis 1. And the Lord God formed man from the dust. Look, see the word formed? Through the idea of squeezing into shape as a potter. See it? A potter from, from the clay. The potter's clay. There's the potter's clay. Isaiah 29, 15, 16. Surely your turning of thing, things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Right there. That's the spiritual man from heaven. Jesus. Now ready to prove that in the word of God. So see all these mainstream preachers that tell you, oh yeah, all you got to do is raise your hand. They're lunatics. No, you have to know the truth. You have to know the truth. When you know the truth, you've been converted, you're inverted, you're on the rock. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Ready? Here's the rock. Two halves of the same equation. You, you invert one half and the two come together as one. And now you're sealed into the day of redemption because you know the truth. Jesus is the truth. He comes into the system, which is a lie. He dies on the cross. You accept his payment. He takes up residency and you kicks out the demon. He stands up in the middle. Lucifer's out. Jesus is in. You're sealed into the day of redemption. Okay, ready to prove everything out right now? Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay, now remember I told you. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you also you have received wherein ye stand. See, because before you accept Christ, Lucifer sits in the midst of Elohim, Ezekiel 28. Ready? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. People, click, you don't preach the gospel. Okay, here's the word gospel. What does it say? Does it say you... Angel Eon, like, okay, ready? It says good message. It's a conjunction of this to announce good news. And it's a conjunction of the word 2095 and 32. You, Angel leads ready? It means to declare and to show. See it? To declare and to show, to announce good news. Look at the root of the word, 2095. What does it say? Good, well, well done. Okay, so what is the second part? G32. Ready? G32. Angel, a messenger, a pastor. So, you angelizo means good angel. <laughs> Click, you never preach the gospel. That's all I preach is the truth of the gospel. Got to get converted or you're going to the pit. 350. Ana Crino. To vigorously judge from down to up. Down is bad, up is good. You, Angelizo, good angel. Okay, let's let that sink in for a minute. Okay, but this is the, this is the scripture. Look, this is 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go down here. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, the euangelizo, good angel, which I preached unto you also, you have received, ready, to receive, to receive near, that is to associate with oneself, uh-huh, <laughs> like uh, Ephesians 2, to unite, to be made whole, wherein ye stand, see the word stand, stand, hiss to me, to stand. The resurrection means, the word resurrection is antihistamine. It's a standing up again. Wherein do you stand? By which you are also saved. To save, to deliver or protect, to heal, to preserve, to make whole. Because you are not whole when there is a good you and a bad you. There is a good angel and there is a demon. So you get converted. Your eyes become single. Your whole body's full of light. Up is light. Down is dark. When you kick the other one out, 
Eyes become single, whole bodies full of light. You're no longer double-minded. Cleanse your hearts, you double-minded. Cleanse your hearts, you double-minded. See? This is all perfection. Watch. Okay, ready? Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. 1540. Let's go down here. Here we go. Down in the 40s. Here it is. Okay, here we got it. But God giveth it a body as it pleased him to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts. Now, let your brain uh, be a little bit open between man and beast because the, the mark of the beast in the end of the world is because man has turned from man to beast. Because there's a beast that's the down part of you is a beastly nature. Now watch this. Here we go. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Here you go. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Look at the word resurrection. I told you. Anahistomy. Anastasis, I'm sorry. Anastasis, the standing up again. A resurrection from death. And I click on the root of the word. It's anahistomy. And I just showed you, see, it's to stand up. See, histomy right there. To stand up. To stand up again. Because, see, when you come into the system, you got turned down. you got to stand up again. Once you have been turned up and converted, now you're guaranteed eternal life. You're just waiting to pass from your mortal body into your eternal life. Now, watch this. I mean, watch how cool this is. So also is the, re the resurrection, the standing up again of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Here you go. Ready? It is sown a natural body. See it? Natural body. Okay, it says sensitive. That is animate. Okay. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body, non carnal. Okay, non-carnal as opposed to gross or demonically a spirit. See it? De demonically. As opposed to this. Okay, so what is it before you get converted? Demonic? It says it right here. Okay, it is sown a natural body. By the word, look at the by the way, look at the word body. Body slave. See it? Body slave. It is sown a natural body. Okay. It is raised in glory. Wait, I'm sorry. Where'd I go? Hang on one sec. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Now, you ready? Genesis 1 is the natural body. That is the, the parthenogenesis, the female energy from the bit, twin female energy, 2X, that does the host body system, gets it going, and creates a breeding population. Genesis 1. Let us create men in our vain show. Representative figure, especially an idol, Phantom. Do you remember Taylor Swift in Swift in Are You Ready for It? If I if you can uh, if you can be a ghost, then I can be a phantom holding him for ransom. Female energy holding male energy for ransom. How do you get the ransom paid? Male comes into the system from heaven. Male energy in a host body dies on a cross for your sins and pays the price for you being held ransom. 
by a phantom in Genesis 1. If you can be a ghost, then I can be a phantom holding him for ransom. Yeah, go watch it. Taylor Swift. Now watch. Here you go. And so it is written. Ready? Here you go, guys. Okay, now, everything I told you in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 hinges right here. It's so simple. Ready? Here it is. And so it is written, the first man, Adam. You see the word Adam? That's a capital A. It's Adam as the one that Christ represented. Look, Hebrew origin. Look at this. Hebrew word 121 right here. I'll make it yellow. 121, Adam, the first man of Jesus, man as his representative. You see Hebrew word 121 right there? That's in Genesis 2 after the Lord God, which is Jesus, breathed into Adam the breath of life and man became a living soul. That's Genesis 2. Okay, ready? The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Now, I'm just going to go right back to Genesis because I want you to see it with your own eyes. Genesis 2. Okay. Elohim created the host body system and his work was done. So the deputy's work was done. What was his work? To create a host body system. And the Lord God, here it is, and the Lord God formed man from the dust and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Okay, Genesis 1, they were walking around talking and doing but the energy in them was death. It's a concept, right? Death is an entity. Just because someone's breathing doesn't mean, oh, that's life. No, no, no. The living soul is life. Death from the pit starts the host body system. The host body system's attached to the pit. Then life comes in. And Genesis 3, they breathe together. That's the, the commingling of the two. Watch. So he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now watch this. Let me show you right down here where you see the number 121 the first time. And the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and he brought them unto, see the word 121? Adam, capital A, to see what he would call them. And Adam, there it is. Look, I'm not going to do it pink. I'll do it. And Adam, Hebrew word 121. See, this is man as Christ's representative, Adam. Genesis 1 is the whole serpent race got started. Why do you think Adidas original is always upside down? I can show you this all day long. This is, this is the thing they didn't want you to know. So you have another race in Genesis 1 prepared for war. Then the Lord God puts Adam in. And anyone that wants to come into the system is allowed to as an angel. You have free will. That's where you exercise your free will. And then you come into the system. And then in Genesis 3, they commingle. And you have life and death within the same host body system. Why do you think the first kids that were born were Cain, which was a child of the devil, and, and Abel? And Cain was a serpent race, and Abel was the Edemic race. There it is. I mean, it's so obvious. Look. Okay, now watch this. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15. Back to 1 Corinthians 15. And here it is. We'll prove out Jesus' name and all that. Here it is. So the first man, Adam, which is Genesis 2, that, that was made a living soul because that's where he was made a living soul. He breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Christ, howbeit that was not that first, which is spiritual, I'm sorry, howbeit that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, so that's Genesis 1, natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. That's Genesis 1. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Do you understand? As is the earthy, such are they that are earthy. And as that is heavenly, such are they that are heavenly. 
And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And now I say, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. So see, Genesis 1 was corruption. And then Genesis 2 is Adam is Christ's representative. Genesis 3, they breed together. Genesis 4, you have a cannibalistic system. This was all taught to me, by the way, by the Lord God whom I serve. It's perfection. And then it manifests in clothing, broken promises. Uh, what's the one? Uh, where they're uh, lurk, lurking class where he's looking out. Uh, he's wearing a hoodie. He's like the, the Grim Reaper. You turn it upside down. It's, a, it's an insect from the pit. Well, what's in the pit? Insects. Who's their king? Satan. Revelation 9. <laughs> you getting this now? It's like perfection, right? Okay, now. Okay. Let me prove out the self-existent eternal Jehovah as Jesus real quick. Ready? So the first man, ready? The first Adam, not the first man, but the first man, Adam. Not the first man, but the first man, Adam. Look what it says. Adam, the first man of Jesus, man as his representative, was made a living soul. Okay, now ready? I'm going to go to John chapter 3. And I'm going to prove out that Jesus, okay, ready? I'm going to prove right now that Jesus is the self-existent eternal Jehovah mentioned in Genesis 2. Ready? Using the word of God. Here we go. Okay, so Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, you know how you see the kingdom of God? You invert everything. That's why the virgin's a dead sheep. That's why the girl with the tongue out is the devil. All you got to do is 350 everything and you can see the kingdom of God. And then once you get, you're converted, then once you're converted, you can enter into the kingdom of heaven because you've been converted. But flesh and blood can't go there either. It's a spiritual thing. Your spirit goes. Okay, now watch. Ready? Jesus, ready? Jesus said right there, you got to be born again because you're at, you're you're the walking dead. You got an entity living in you that's death. So here you go. 24, 24. Say this out loud. Pronounce it. E A Sus. Jesus. Okay, that is the Greek word for English word Jesus. So in English, we say Jesus. In Greek, you say Jesus. It is of Hebrew origin. It tells you the word Jesus is of Hebrew origin 3091. That is Yeho Shua. See Yeho and then Shua. Okay, well, Yeho is the self existent eternal Jehovah right here. Look, the self existent eternal Jehovah. What's Shua 3467 uh, to open wide or set free, to make free, to make safe? So Jesus is a self-existent eternal Jehovah that opens wide and sets free. Let me go to Isaiah to prove that out. Ready? Isaiah 61. Ready? The Spirit of the Lord God. Look, the Spirit of the Lord God. What's the word for God? The self-existent eternal Jehovah. The spirit of the self-existent eternal Jehovah is upon me because the Lord, look at the word Lord right here. See the word Lord? Self-existent eternal Jehovah has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty. The word liberty means freedom. The liberty to the captives like those that were transported, carried away into captivity, led away, taken captive, and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Ready? Uh, how do you open the prison? Redoubled, opening of a dungeon. Specifically, the eyes, to open the senses of the eyes. To them that are bound, to yoke together, to join in battle. See it? Okay, now, this was spoken by Jesus in Luke chapter 4. 
when he took his ministry. So Jesus said, he, he was in the synagogue in Nazareth, and he stood up and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. What's the word for gospel? You angelizo. Good angel. Jesus is the good angel in the system. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal. Ready? To make whole the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance, forgiveness, and pardon to the captives, prisoner of war. Remember Genesis 2? Okay. Prisoner of war and the recovering of sight, the restoration of sight on a blepsis. It means up to look up. See it? To look up. Okay, the recovery of sight by looking up to the blind and to set at liberty those that were bruised. The recovery of sight to, to I'm sorry, to the blind and to set at liberty those that are bruised. Jesus is the self-existent eternal Jehovah that opens wide. Yasha means to open wide. The opening of dungeons. Watch this. I want you to see the word opening of the prison. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison. Look at the word opening. Redoubled. The opening of a dungeon. Do you understand? He redoubles your eyes. That's why when you turn the virgin upside down, it's dead sheep. That's why when I turn the girl upside down, it's the devil. The devil is female energy from the pit. Energy. Male and female host bodies, they're suits. They are suits. They're an illusion. What's going on inside the suit is what's really going on. Okay, now, there is your scripture lesson to end all scripture lessons. <laughs> okay. Now, let me show you what's going on in the world the world's at the end we're at the end of the world you know that 87 billion dollars in equipment that was left over there let me show you what two people said well more than two people there's a lot of people saying that but i want you to listen to this very quickly This is Mark Levin, and this is Tom Cotton. Uh, I want you to listen to what he says right here, and let's see if I can get closed captioning on. Ready? Pay attention. They're talking about what's going on in the Middle East. I want you to hear what Mark Levin says, because this is being parroted by other people that know what's going on. You do not leave $87 billion behind in Afghanistan for any reason whatsoever. You, you either destroy it in place, but if it was left there, it was left to arm whoever got it. Well, who got it? Well, don't you think the people over in the Middle East that want to destroy Israel are the guys that got it? Okay, listen to what they say. This is what they said, not me. But uh, is this, what Biden has done with Iran, anything short of appeasement or even worse, the rearming of an enemy that, that is spreading terrorism, that wants nukes and basically wants to destroy the West? Mark, what Joe Biden has done, and really what Barack Obama and Joe Biden both have done for almost 11 years now, is abject appeasement of Iran. Uh, and it's not because they're foolish or naive or inexperienced. It's their ideological commitment to elevate Iran to atone for what they think are America's sins against Iran. The nuclear deal was just a part of that. The relaxing of sanctions is another big part of it. Barack Obama gave Iran hundreds of billions of dollars worth of sanctions relief. And since Joe Biden took office, he's given them tens of billions of dollars of sanctions relief, not just the $6 billion ransom hostage or uh, ransom for hostages that he paid last month notoriously, but by not vigorously enforcing sanctions on oil exports, for instance. And if okay, so I'm just going to pause it there because I don't want to use too much content. So just go back and play that little segment over and over and let that sink in for a second. 
Why did Joe Biden deplete our strategic oil reserve instead of having the United States just produce their own oil? Because when, you know, uh, like I said, I'm not a big Trump fan. I'm not. But he knew what he was doing by producing our own oil. Our economy was smoking and now it's in the dumpster. Almost looks like it's by design, doesn't it? Sure does. On a crino. So now, if you go and you watch this thing that I told you to watch about this um, author that said how one author figured out that this guy's book was total fiction and was a bunch of nonsense, then if you have, you know, your your brain firing, it's pretty simple to figure out. Mm -hmm. So now we're in a crossroads. So now the United States is on the destruction. Got to check that box for the world government. And so it's now here's the other thing. I prophesied in 2007, out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem will cover the city by the sea and great shall be the destruction of that city. And behold, the great wall which holds back the abundance of the river shall burst forth, bringing the hand of the oppressor against you. For I have seen it, says the Lord, for mighty is your enemy that has risen from within your own borders. Now behold, the abomination of desolation spoken above by spoken above by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place here is a mystery made known to you you are the holy place of which i speak and the abomination of desolation shall rise from within the walls of the temple to destroy the temple for have you not seen and have you not heard has it not been made to known to you for when the sons of god came in unto the daughters of men they did bear children to them and the same became mighty men has not the sea turned mighty, and the sea shall turn terrible before your very eyes, and the terrible one shall be elevated within the sea. And behold, the man of peace, Barack Hussein Obama, shall come forth from the sea, and with words of peace he will bring chaos and destruction. Behold, the fig tree puts forth its leaves, and suddenly the time is upon you. Okay, so I spoke those words in 2007. They're here now. The bombings, the words that I spoke out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. Those words manifested on the new hundred dollar bill. The hundred dollar bill shows a nuclear blast blowing up New York. The ten dollar bill shows a tidal wave, the same words, water as high as the walls of Jerusalem out of a prophetic utterance the Lord gave me. Those words are on the ten dollar bill now, a tidal wave coming over a seven story building. That's not possible. Well, you know it's true because the bombings of the Twin Towers are also printed on the $20 bill. The Pentagon's printed on the $20 bill. The Federal Building bombings printed on the old $20 bill. All these bombings are printed as images on U.S. currency notes. But the key is you have to make a five-pointed star. You have to make a pentagram and connect the vertices and turn it upside down to see the bombings. Oh, those who hide their plans, they turn everything upside down. Who's they? Angel of the bottomless pit that's running the smoke and mirror show just to keep the angels confused so they don't know what's going on. All you got to do is invert the world and you'll see the truth. You'll see the truth. You'll be able to make your confession to Jesus and let Jesus take up residency inside of you. The two become one. You're no longer at spiritual war within yourself. Your spirit will be at peace now because you'll be unified. And then you'll no longer fear death because you know you've been spiritually unified and death is no longer a burden to you. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. I had a very supernatural thing happen. I started this video with I was awakened at 3 a.m. I'm going to let this video play right now. I'm going to, right now, I'm going to load up this video. Um, it is 9.25. This video will be up by 10.30 at the latest, probably, and make sure there's no issues. As soon as this video is up, I'm going to do my 3 a.m. thing. And I'm going to bear witness. I'm going to give a testimony for what the Lord showed me to prepare your hearts, to prepare your minds, and to make sure your slate, that you've made your confession to God. If you've been converted, you're converted. 
you cannot you can no longer sin because satan can't attach himself to you anymore once you're converted and your spirit's been made whole you may slip up you may make some mistakes but you have an advocate before the father now you would have to really go out of your way hard to uh to lose your salvation if you're truly converted okay all right i'm gonna let this play right now because i don't want to do another 30 minutes and then something happened to this video and i'll be like are you kidding me i've had a lot of issues going on with uh equipment <laughs> everyone that knows me hey my equipment's acting weird i'm like no kidding <laughs> all right i love you guys in christ so what do you guys think? Genesis 1, Genesis 2, 1 Corinthians 15. What are you kidding? It's a no-brainer. Spiritual man comes first. Christ, Jesus, Christ's representative, comes into the system. There's a system called the world, you know, the host body, the flesh. And then you live out your life in the flesh. If you don't get born again, then you go to hell. That's it. All right. Oh, ow. Okay. The bear hug cult. There you go. <laughs> People that call me a cult leader are like, y'all are weird. Okay, now, we're a cult because we love each other. So we're very weird to the world. The world's like, yeah. Um, there's a band called The Cult. Uh, Ian Asbury, I used to really like listening to their music. They have an album called Love. And I'm like, oh, I get it now. They're making fun of us that actually love each other. Like we're a cult. Uh, what about Lady Gaga? Stupid love making fun of us. Yeah, that you know. But here we are trapped in a host body system, and looking for love in all the wrong places. The place you look is up for love. Jesus is love. All right. This is you. This is Johnny. Bear hug from Johnny. I love you. Peace and grace. The end of the world's at the door, guys. I'm gonna give you a testimony. I'm gonna let this load up, and I'm coming right back today with that testimony. Because it was put on my heart, I had to. So it'll be here. Um, all right. Stay the course. The king's coming. <laughs> yes, he is. The line of the tribe of Judah is coming. All right. 